Broken charts are a very rare sight in rhythm games, and its documentation of them is fairly scarce. These are normally the result of either an oversight during the charting process, or charting something so accurately that it's almost impossible to hit due to the game engine's limitations. Rock Band probably has the most documentation and examples of this, albeit still very few of them. Abraxas of Filth has multiple bass kicks that are placed directly after a snare in the middle of a roll, Greengrass and High Tides from Rock Band 1 is just about unfc'able since the strumming limit makes Solo 2e borderline impossible, and lastly my favorite, Rock Band 1's next to you vocals glitch, where the ow talkie was completely busted for no good reason, and to my knowledge has been only fc'd by a couple of people. The point I'm trying to make is that broken notes for the most part are pretty explainable, and it's apparent how stuff like this can happen. However, when your game as a whole is broken, and you stack broken notes on top of that, then you really start to run into some issues, and you end up leaving players puzzled on how to even handle them. Because you know someone out there is itching to FC every song possible, no matter how bad the game. This is the story of one of the most broken charts in all of rhythm games, I'm Broken from Rock Revolution. If you don't know what Rock Revolution is, don't worry, most people don't, or at least want to pretend they don't remember it. Rock Revolution is a rhythm game developed by HB Studios and Zoe Mod, published by Konami, and would be first released to North America on October 15, 2008. HB Studios and Zoe Mode were known to have bangers before their development with Rock Revolution. HB Studios had a Madden 07 and a Cricket 07, whereas Zoe Mode had classics such as Dancing with the Stars and Disney Sing It. In all seriousness, it was apparent that Konami was trying to capitalize off of the hype that games like Guitar Hero and Rock Band were bringing to the scene, as they had actually trademarked the name Guitar Revolution back in 2006 in preparation. Upon the game's release, it was apparent that this game was simply not good. The scroll direction was much different, the songs were undercharted, the engine and timing windows were weird, the entire game was off sync, the drums looked hilarious, awkward art style, and the covers were, well, While this game as a whole felt pretty rushed, it's especially not all too surprising that the audio side of this game felt rushed too, because it actually was. If you want to learn more about that, you can go check out Steve Womet's video on how he had to cover almost the entire game on guitar in just a matter of a few months. If it wasn't bad enough, Guitar Hero World Tour sold half a million copies within its first month, while Rock Revolution sold under 3,000 across all of their consoles. Truly one of the bigger flops in the rhythm game scene, as the game came off as extremely derivative and poorly made, and is mainly brought up nowadays as just a remember this type of conversation. Surprisingly enough, this game actually had DLC, but only in three separate waves did they release any. Two singles on October 24th, 2008, a Bimani track pack on November 13th, 2008, and lastly, a Pantera track pack on January 14th, 2009. The one we're going to be focusing on is the Pantera track pack. This DLC pack included five songs, Five Minutes Alone, Mouth for War, Cemetery Gates, This Love, and I'm Broken. These songs would be pulled from the game and haven't been accessible for years, so very, very few people most likely even own these songs to begin with. Every single song in this pack had something wrong with the guitar chart, in which they had broken notes, and we'll explain what those are shortly. Banjo-Kazooie would jot down the first documentation of some of these, as they found some in 5 Minutes Alone and Mouth for War, and this allowed another user to dig around for a great majority of these throughout the Pantera pack. And his name was Preben Sorensen. Preb deduced that every single song in the Pantera track pack had at least one broken note, and would eventually rank the entire game's songs from least to most difficult to FC. At the very end of the list was a chart fittingly called I Am Broken. This song is pretty standard, in fact it's actually pretty easy for the most part, and at first glance, the solo doesn't look that bad either. I'll play the solo for you now, and I'll let you try to figure out what's wrong with the chart. Couldn't see anything? Well, that's because you're not supposed to. Behind three of these notes during the solo is another note that is just the slightest bit ahead of the next note. This red note here, 
another red note here, and then a blue note here. Guesses have been around something as fast as a 128th note, since they're practically invisible on the game. Basically, you have to double strum these notes to hit them, but since they're so close together, the methodology of hitting these even remotely consistently was yet to be thoroughly explored. Hammer-ons are doable, but it was just more practical to strum them. Like I said before, these are throughout every single Pantera DLC song and a couple others outside of this pack, but there's never been a concrete answer what causes these. Rush charting, errors within the chart editor, maybe a combination of the two, who knows. Regardless, a couple people were dedicated to FCing these charts, and there were two in particular that documented their findings, Bob Dole SH and Nuno VH. Bob Dole uploaded a video on March 9th, 2011 titled, On FCable. In this video he plays the solo on half speed, hits two of the broken notes, but one of them for some reason refuses to be hit, which would be the second red note. Nuno commented a few times trying to come up with some ideas, but would eventually get to do some testing on his own. And this is the conclusion that he would come to in his video. A year later, on March 23rd, 2012, Nuno uploaded a video of him trying to FC on Broken Solo on half speed, but sadly could not find any success. However, if we compare Nuno's video to Bob Dole's video, something seems strange. Bob Dole is able to hit the first and last broken note, while Nuno can't seem to hit the first one, but can hit the last two. Why is that? Apparently for no good reason, there are actually console-specific differences in how the notes are processed in the game, which is why we get such different results. Nuno's on Xbox 360, and Bob Dole's on PS3. Preb would further confirm he would get the same PS3 results that Bob Dole did, and Dave Sucks at Rock Band would confirm Nuno's theory on the Xbox 360. Both conclusions still led to the song being completely un unfortunately, and that was pretty much the extent of the journey until the very next day. Nuno had uploaded a full solo FC on half speed, showing that the broken notes were finally doable now. What was the solution? Changing the calibration. When Nuno brought this game to his cousin's house, he played on a CRT instead of the HD TV he has at home, in which he had to use a 200 millisecond calibration configuration to play the game properly. At his cousin's house, he didn't even have to use any delay to compensate since CRTs virtually have no latency and found himself hitting broken notes in that game much easier than usual. I actually tested this out with one of the songs he tested it on, which is All My Life Expert on Bass. With 0 milliseconds, I was able to hit the broken notes just about every time, but on 200 milliseconds, I couldn't even come close to hitting one of them. Although, the note we saw Nuno miss in his previous video was actually done with a 0 millisecond calibration. So what did he do then? After tirelessly working through different numbers, he eventually came to a conclusion that it was somewhere within the realm of a 62 to 68 millisecond audio video offset. Yeah, you can't change the audio and video calibration separately, they're both together for some reason. And they also have a controller latency tool that I'm not going to get into for simplicity's sake. As a side note, in this clip, you can hear him strumming way more than twice, and he still didn't break combo, 
so not only were the notes broken, but the way hammer-ons were treated were completely busted as well. While this solo was confirmed to be doable on 50% speed, 60% didn't seem quite feasible according to Nuno. So there was still a roadblock, and after copious amounts of testing, Nuno ruled that at least on full speed, this solo was still simply not FCable. About another year later, a 70% FC on the I'm Broken solo would be done. Nuno notes that 60 milliseconds seems to be the calibration to use, and that the timing becomes much more awkward as the section gets faster. After this, however, he didn't really take any interest with the game anymore, and with no one else attempting it, it would lie dormant for five years straight. Until one day, this happened. That took hours. Wow. FC still unlikely. On June 17th, 2018, Nuno had become the first person to FC the solo for I'm Broken, about 10 years after the game's release. This was truly a revolutionary feat for the game, and proved that in theory, this song was now FCable. On July 5th, 2018, Nuno had found an even better calibration setting to use, which was negative 100 milliseconds, which made him far more consistent at it, getting it every few tries. Except, somehow there was yet another issue when Nuno tried to do it in a real run, and this is where things really get confusing. So we know that using a certain calibration allows us to hit the solo, but what if I told you that quick play does not behave the same way? That's right, using the same calibration, the notes behave differently between practice mode and quick play, and no matter what, Nuno could not hit the first broken note at negative 100 milliseconds calibration in quick play. With negative 150 milliseconds, he can hit the first and third broken note, but now the second one wasn't doable. Why was this? This is where offset theory comes into play. Offset theory is a theory by Nuno that proposes the idea that in Rock Revolution, Broken notes are affected depending on how much of the song is played before said broken notes. The most supportive piece of evidence is that in practice mode, you can select two ways to play the full song, which are full song, or by highlighting all the sections individually. For I'm Broken, the full song option will play 6 seconds of silence before the chart starts, just how quick play does, whereas highlighting all the sections individually only plays 2 seconds of silence. Since I don't have access to any DLC songs, I decided to test this out myself on songs from the main set list, and I did get some notable gaps for starting times between the full song option and selecting all the sections in practice mode. However, my gaps were nowhere near as large as what Nuno reports for I'm Broken. Nuno got to do some further testing with the rest of the Pantera pack, and his results were all over the place for starting times, so it wouldn't be too absurd to assume that this glaring difference in starting times is specific to the DLC songs. The full song option and quick play do end up producing the same starting times, but that doesn't exactly do us any justice. Also like I showed before, with 0 millisecond calibration, I can hit the broken notes just fine in all my life, but for I'm broken, we noted that one of these notes aren't hittable at 0 milliseconds, so a different calibration setting had to be used. Even after finding a very consistent number in 2018, Nuno said that the broken note difficulty skyrocketed in quick play, and that the first broken note was deemed impossible to hit, despite hitting all three just fine in practice mode. This is where the theory further notes that on the same calibration, broken notes can be entirely hittable in one instance, but on the other, these double notes can fall on the exact same frame, and thus we're not able to strum both of them as a result. Lastly, the difference in starting times is a bit more nuanced too. 
because Nuno says that putting just a few sections in front of the solo in practice mode did affect the difficulty of the broken notes. So we can only imagine how different the solo plays in isolation compared to starting the song at the very beginning. Again, this is all just theorizing and speculation, but it's kinda hard to come to any other conclusion. So with all of that, what exactly was the best way to find out how to FC the song? Well, really to just find the right calibration and just grind enough runs for it. The issue with this is that the only way you can test this properly is to play the entire song up until the solo and see how consistent your calibration setting is. This is 10 times more tedious since you can't just restart the solo over and over again because of how differently broken notes behave when you isolate the solo in practice mode. Just a millisecond or two can make all the difference, so a decent bit of luck was definitely going to be needed if you wanted to even have a chance at FCing this. But Nuno got to work, documenting what calibrations were more consistent than others, playing through the same mundane two and a half minutes over and over again, just to see if some calibration would work, and after a couple weeks of attempts in 2020, it looked like it had finally all come into place. I Am Broken had finally been FC'd after years and years of theory crafting, attempts, and a bit of luck. It all came together, and the Titan that was once thought to be impossible was now taken down a decade later. What was the magic calibration number? Negative 130 milliseconds. Truly a remarkable feat for the rhythm game genre, and a fascinating look into one of the most broken charts in rhythm games. One song still has yet to be FC'd from the Pantera pack, and that's 5 minutes alone. You thought 3 broken notes was bad? Well, <laughs> try 17 of them. Thankfully these aren't within a solo, and are pretty reasonable to hit in isolation, but we have to remember that Quick Play shakes that all up, and some of these broken notes are even more strange than I'm Broken. As for some of the chords, you have to strum them as individual notes at times. There's also some other instances that I'm not going to get into, it's truly a hot mess, just like this game to be honest. But when players are willing to circumvent the barriers no matter how asinine, chances are it's going to get done somehow, someday, and maybe we'll actually see this game officially full game FC'd as time goes on. Huge thanks to Nuno for helping out with this video, and please go check out his channel and show him some love on the I'm Broken video too. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel, and if you'd like to support the channel for more rhythm gaming content like this, feel free to check out my Patreon, drop a sub if you're new here, and check out my other links below. I'll see you all in whatever video I upload next, and take care.